Blessed be the name of the Lord. We, we, we are now in chapter 50. We are trying to finish because we've been looking at the life of Joseph and Joseph is asking many, many questions and the final question he's asking is how will you be remembered? How will you be remembered? How will they remember you? Wewe, watakukumbuka na mnagani? I, some of you who are my age mates uh, when I tell you what I'll tell you you remember it used to happen every evening as we went to pray we would pray a prayer like this Lord bless those people that are traveling whether they are walking protect them from animals because I agree when the animals were many atakweda naivasha tutukwa tunakojana mahali flani tuwe watu wengi ili chui tukimkuta tujitete tukiwa wengi so prayer would be like that. We would pray, oh God, those that are traveling, uh, take them home safely. We would also pray for those that are in hospitals. You know, I know nowadays you don't pray for them. You know, and also selfish a little bit. So we would pray for those that are sick, those that are in prison. I think it is because of that uh, story in the book of Matthew, you know, that I was sick, you never, you know, and so on and so forth. So we would pray for everybody. But we would also pray for a very interesting prayer. The prayer would be, God, watch over us tonight. And if, if any one of us would die tonight, receive us. And we would pray, Ni maombi, unarudia, rudia, mpaka, unarudia, rudia, mpaka, unarudia, rudia. Mpaka unafika pali kifo, haukiogopi. Unajua saia huombagi habari ya kifo. And the Puritans used to say, there is grace. Kuna neema ya kukufa. There is grace. There are some people when they die, you look at them, you see them smiling. Na I'm a dead. I don't know whether you have had this time. Nilimuona. Alikuwa ni kama yeye. Hata sura ijabadilika. Hajakuwa mweusi. Ni yeye tu. Karibu usalimie yeye. Na kuna wengine wanasalimia ga. Hata kuna wengine when our kiss goodbye. So the guy looks okay. It's like the grace to die. But we also know there are some people when they are dying, oh my goodness. Their face is like you are fighting with a monster. Have you ever had story like those? There are some of us who say sitaki kumuona nataka ile picha ya zamani. Because they are not so sure. The grace of dying. May God give us the grace of dying. Because if there is something that will happen to all of us, is that gokua, no mohaka, tokakua. That's what uh, our Catholic brothers sing to us every time we go to the funeral. Dying will have to die. But the question is, how will you die? So die. Um dying grace, the grace of dying. So how will they remember you? Because it is how they will remember you which is a bit critical for you. You see, questions are like how long do you expect to live here on earth? You know, when I was 20, I thought I would die at 50. You know, 50 No people used to retire at 50. Now I can retire at 50, I can pick 55, I shall kufa. Papa kuna wengine mungia kuwa mekufa kama ni wakati uwe. Lakini wakagundua, hey, watu wa mekataa kukufa. People go to a place wakakataa kukufa 55. Tuka ongezwa 60. Sani naona wanaeza enda at 65. Kwa sababu watu bado tuna survive. At 65 bado tuko na energy. Muliona Charles Njonjo. At a hundred, that guy is going to live a little longer. He, he looks like he's going to surprise a lot of us. Hajaanza kwenda na mkuwajo? Oh. Iyo ni neema. So we don't know for how long we are going to live on this earth. But then the question is, when that final time comes, what are we going to, to say? What are we going to say? In Genesis 15 verse 20, this is what Joseph tells his brother. These are the final words of Joseph. He tells his brother, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. 
You see, Joseph, he, at this time, he's just about to die. He is 110, because that's the time he died. But at that time before he dies, he, he, he has lived in Egypt for 93 years, almost a century. And they are going to stay there again for another three centuries before they are taken home to the land that was promised to them. And it is recorded twice in, the Genesis, in Genesis chapter 50 and Hebrews 11 that there are some things that Joseph saw. He saw them. Even at that point, Genesis 50, 24 to 26, it says this. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will visit you. God will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he saw to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they blamed him and kept him. So twice in these two, three verses, Joseph says, God will visit you. And this is faith, because he's just about to die, but he, he is not dying with a lot of challenge. He is still focused. He still knows at 110 that God will still come and visit them. And that when they are visited, then they should carry his bones and not bury his bones in Egypt. Egypt was good. Yes, it has saved them from destruction. Egypt was okay for them at that time. There was plenty to eat and so on. And they, some of them maybe thought they would stay there forever. But Joseph tells them, surely there is a future. Why Joseph told them is because of two things. Number one, Joseph knew what God has, had promised his great grandfather. Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 1. He knew that Abraham had been promised. And therefore, land was there. Abraham never got it, but the land was there for him. The second reason is because of his own life. His life proved that God keeps his promise. Now I'm talking to people here that those two things need to be critical to you. First of all, what God has promised will still come to pass. And two, looking at your walk with God. Looking at the things that God has done for you, then you have faith that even what you don't have, God is going to bring it to pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in Hebrews 11, this is what the Bible says. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. And he gave instruction about his bones. This is Hebrews 11 verse 22. Now, you know, that is what is remembered for. Anything else that happened for Joseph, though he did very good, but what they remember is the faith he had that even when he was dying, he was still able to tell his brothers that the Lord will come and visit you. The Lord will come. And it is recorded to him. It is not because of the faith he had when he was betrayed that he did not become bitter. It is not the faith that he had that when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he did not yield to temptation. It is not the faith that Joseph had when he was forgotten in prison, he did not turn away from God. It is not the faith that Joseph had that when he met his brothers, he did not seek revenge. But it is what we find in him at the end of the journey. He can still prophesy a better day is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A better day is coming. And his faith is brighter even at the end when he's having his final moment. So when we think of Joseph, these are things we remember. But God saw his faith shining brightest in his final moment. That it was brighter then. Now his bones were left. And I would imagine, because it was only a uh, hundred years and ten, there were still other years for them to wait. It was only one, uh, uh, one century, and there were three other centuries for them to wait in Egypt. And I would imagine 
A hundred years after Joseph had died, maybe a child goes to his, uh, his, father, his mother and said, Mother, how long will we be in Egypt? Are we going to be here forever? And then the mother would take a moment and compose herself and maybe would, would uh, brush a tear away and say, Honey, look over there. See that box? And then the boy would say, I see it. What is it? What is in that box? And the boy would say, it contains the bones of your great grandfather Joseph. The little boy walks over and eyes the box from top to bottom. Then his mother said, sweetheart, what does it say to you? He looks at the side of the box and peers into it and reads the Hebrew letters. Then he reads it aloud, bound for Canaan. You see, as long as they saw the bones were bound for Canaan, they knew even themselves are bound for Canaan. Now the question that all you and I need always to ask ourselves, do we have that in our homes? Bound for heaven. You know, bound for heaven. Even when things are so right or so wrong, bound for heaven. That with the BBI or not BBI, bound for heaven. With the plenty or not plenty, bound for heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That we can live together in heaven. We can uh, rejoice together in heaven. We can see each other in heaven. Bound for heaven. I know some of us, our homes have different stories. Because we, we are so narrow-minded, we look at what we have. And many times, even what we have, we look at what we don't have and we complain so, so much. But here they are, bound for heaven. Yes, bound for heaven. And then the boy would ask, Mother, what does that mean? And then his, the mother would say, We are not going to be here forever because when your grand, great grandfather was sold here, he was only 17. He lived here for 93 years. So one century is gone, but in the other years to come, we will go. They did not know they will wait for three centuries. They thought is going to happen quickly. When I got saved myself, I was almost convinced that Jesus was coming in 1977. Because it was a talk in high school. But he didn't come. So they said he will come in the 80s. And I waited. He didn't come. Then, oh, millennium. Remember the story of millennium? Eh? When we were here moving into the millennium. Even the cashier that had said, the computers will all break down. Huh? So we came for the cashier here. After I told the people, Happy New Year, and I finished preaching, I ran to my office to see a computer that is breaking down. I switched it on and I discovered it was also telling me, Happy New Year. So he didn't come. What that simply means is I'm going to keep on waiting, but I have to be faithful. So what will they say about me? What are they going to say about you? Because that is critical. For Joseph, they say he was a man of faith and they record him in the book of Hebrews 11 and verse 22 that even his bones, he said, no, carry my bones. Carry my bones. Don't bury them here. Carry them to the promised land. So three lessons that we can learn from this story about Joseph. And as we do so, remember I'm asking myself, how will you be remembered? That's the question that we are asking ourselves. And in this village, there were two brothers. They were thieves. You know, I don't know whether I've, I shared this joke one time, that one of the pastors was going to bury someone who was a member here. Member. So, uh, you know, one of the pastors going to bury comes and tells me, this brother is a member here. But he was shot by a stray bullet. That's what they meant. He was shot. And uh, so the pastor tells me, no, we'll go and bury him. He's a good Christian. I said, no problem. Go bury him. But if you get a shocker, don't be amazed. So he went to the funeral he discovered he was a thief even before he started preaching. Nobody showed up. He had no friend.
when that was mentioned, he looked around and discovered there were some very strange guys who were there. And they were armed to the teeth. They were not boys. And they were in strategic places. Actually, they were not standing together. They were in strategic... He started looking, discovered Yule Jama natupa macho everywhere. Yule Mungine natupa macho everywhere. Mungine amekapa natupa macho everywhere. Then later he was told nobody could stand to be a friend to this one. The police were here looking for his friends. So he was a thief. But you see, we bury anybody. Kwa sababu, kuzika ni kuzika. Sindio, mchanga urudi, mchanga ani. So this, these two guys were thieves, robbers. They were known in the village. Two brothers, deadly. So one of them was shot and died. And this other one who was alive went to the pastor. Told the pastor, you have to say my brother is a saint. And they argued, but he's a thief. He was killed. No, you have to say he's a saint. So finally the pastor said, then I will see how I'm going to say it. So after, after the pastor preached a little bit, he said, the man on this coffin is a murderer. He is a thief. But comparing him and his brother who is alive, that one in the coffin is a saint. <laughs> All what his brother wanted is that one. So the one dying is a saint, but the one remaining is not. The question is, when your time has gone, what will they say about you? What will they say about you? But for Paul, he has good words for those people that he walked with. And you know, Proverbs 22 verse 1 tells us, a good name is better, or rather to be chosen than great riches. And a loving favor than silver or gold. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 says that a good name is better than precious oil. And the day of death actually than the day of one's birth. That is amazing. Yani kukufa kwako. Ikuzuri kuliko kuzariwa kwako. So in what we are discussing today is that we are trying to find out what will you be remembered for? Paul in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse number 4, he, he, he goes with the people. And you see, for him, he, he goes with the people and he knows where they come from. It's like, uh, I know Josephine where she comes from. It's like, I, I don't know where Samson comes from. I only know the geographical area. But for Catherine, I know where she comes from. I know better where she comes from because I've been there. I know where John comes from because I, I can go on and mention. I know where Openda comes from because I've been there. I know where faith comes from because I've been there. You, you know, you get the, the gist. There are some of you that I know where you come from, uh, uh, Murage. I know where you come from. I know where you, you know. I know where... Uh, uh, Kaunda comes from. I've been there, you know. And a, and, and a lot of you. So I know where you come from. So Paul had the people and he knew where they come from. So he had one called Sopata. This man came from, from Berea. Accompanied him to Asia. Also was Aristarchus and Secudas of the Salonians. They came from the Salonian. Gaius came from Derby. Timothy and Tychicus and Trophimus were, they came from Asia. So he knew where all of them were coming from. And he had interacted with all of them. So he had some words for them. For each one of them. In the book of Ephesians 6.21 this is where I want to dwell a little bit. Ephesians 6.21 and 22 it says but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing, Tychicus, a beloved brother and a faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you. Verse 22. Whom I have sent to you for, his very, for this very purpose, 
that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. You know, yesterday, uh, there, there was some news of this man who used to sing Nyimbo za Tarabu. And they said he used to advise people, za Mapenzi, za Ndoa, za Siasa. But that guy at that time, he, he is so poor. And he said, Nizikeni nikiwa hai. When you hear somebody saying, Nizike nikiwa hai, anasema, Iyo suti na viatu unataka kununulia nikikufa, nunua saa hii. Iyo outside catering, unataka kuleta kwangu nikikufa, irete saa hii. That's what he meant. He was not seeing very well, alikuwa na mukwajo, and then he started saying the people he has sung for. Nimeimbia sonko. Nimeimbia joho. Nimeimbia moi. Nimeimbia uhuru. Nimeimbia kibake. Nimeimbia maitha. You know, I looked at that. But here he is. Nizikeni. Because when he will die, front page, Paul, you know, when they are still alive, he has positive words. He is not waiting for them to die. He is telling them, this person, even before he dies, this is him. This is the way he is. A beloved brother. So a number of things that... Uh, 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 um, and the many other verses that Paul is trying to say about this brother. Going back to verse 21. He is a beloved brother. That is in his relationship. We can live together because the person next to you is a brother. We can love each other because we are our brothers. That's our relationship. Brother, sister, we are here. Born in the same kingdom. Bona Yesu asifiwe. So Paul is saying, no, as far as the kingdom is concerned, this is my brother. I am his brother. Number two, he says in the same verse, a faithful minister. And this is in his responsibilities. Can we say so and so a faithful minister in their responsibility that this is not only my brother, but in his ministry, he is faithful. Faithful. He is faithful in his ministry. In, in verse 22, the third thing is that he is a reliable, reliable communicator. I'm sending him to you for the purpose of communicating to you of my affairs. So he is a, a good communicator. That is his mission. So we can say for him, his mission is good as a communicator. How will they remember you? And then lastly, he says, a trusted comforter. That is his ministry. He will come and comfort your hearts. Four things that we can say about each other. That I can look at you and say, you are my brother. And I can look at, uh, to you and say, in your uh, ministry, you are faithful. I can also say that you are able, for your mission, you are able to communicate. And finally, you are a comforter. You can encourage others. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So three things, and then I'll finish to wrap up what we are saying. Number one, the greatest thing you can do is to pass your faith along to your children and grandchildren. That is the greatest thing that you can do. Remember what we asked the other day? What will be, you you'll be remembered for? Or if you are kajat, what would you do? What would you, who would this person you would call and what would you ask them? You will be asking them of their children. You will tell your spouse to take care of your children. So it is key. Abraham passed his life to Isaac. Isaac gave his life to Jacob. Jacob gave it to Joseph and Joseph gives his faith to the whole nation of Israel. He saves them. He brings them together. The Christian faith is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. But we have a baton that we need to carry along so that we can pass it to somebody else. It's not just a relay. It is a marathon. I have faith because someone preached to me. 
You have faith because someone preached to you. Someone came and gave you the word and so you have it because someone preached to you. Then why don't you do the same? What you have received, pass it on to somebody else. I don't want to fear where I stand because I also received from someone. I want to pass it to somebody else so that the progression can continue. Somebody spoke to you, pass it on. Pass it on to your children. We normally say, do it when they are young. Because even when they try to get out of it, you have a place to tell God, I told them. Nili waambia. Na unaambia buwana hata potea kwa sababu nili muambia. Itabubujika ndani yake kwa sababu nili muambia. Pass it on. Pass it on to somebody else and they will remember. Pass it on. I know Alice has shared this of this couple that they are our friends. And this week she, re she, re she repeated the same story. Of going to this church where the pastor and his wife and his three children were all doing something in the service. All of them. There was one in the keyboard. There was one in the worship. There, were, there was one in Sunday school and media and so on. So we looked at that and we were impressed. Just like you would be impressed, isn't it? When all your children are involved in the things of God. So after we were having a cup of tea, my wife asked the mother to tell us the secret. What do you do so that all your children are serving the Lord? What's the secret? And the mother breathed in and breathed out and told us two things. One, tocology. Two, neology. Two. Talk, 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 talk. Pray, 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 pray. Did you get something today? I'm saying, don't you worry about them. Talk. Talk in the morning. Talk in the evening. Talk. Tell them. But still, talk. Tokology. Theology. That you should not worry, but keep on talking. Keep on talking. Keep on talking. Now we ambao naambiwa si usikie bas. Number two, the saddest thing that can happen is to become bitter as you grow old. And I don't know why. Some of our parents get bitter. I don't know why, but some get so bitter to the point that they blame even your grandmother or grandfather. They get so bitter, they say, I am here because my father did not do this or do the other. They get so bitter. And sometimes they want to curse their children, but I normally say, a curse without a cause cannot hold itself. So it is like my parent, it will not hold that akisema. You know, what are you going to say? I have been giving you food. I have taken you to hospital. When you call, I run. Sasa itashikiria nini? Itashikiria nini? Wacha kupoteza energy. But it is so sad because people as they grow old, you start becoming bitter. You, are, you, you become bitter for the system. I would have done this. I have done that. I have done that. So that and so on. But I'm saying this. In this year of restoration, one of the things that God needs to help us is to wait like Joseph waited and he died waiting. Jacob waited and he died waiting. Isaac waited, he died waiting. We are going to wait and some of us will die waiting, but there are some remnant that one day they will hear the trumpet sound. They will hear the trumpet sound one of these days. The saddest thing to happen is to become bitter. Because we know we have seen this. Very close people to us. As they grow old, they become bitter. They are angry. They are filled with resentment. Because life didn't turn out the way they thought it would. Abraham had a promise from God. But he never saw it. 
He saw just part of it. It was not completely fulfilled. Isaac had the same promise, but he died without seeing it fulfilled. Jacob had the same promise. He died in Egypt. Joseph had the same promise. And he died in Egypt too, but he prophesied to them. He said, the Lord will surely visit you. He had faith that God was going to visit him. And the testimony was, he left his bones and said, my bones should not be buried. But the third thing that I find from looking at the life of Joseph is this. The happiest way to live is to realize God's work is bigger than you are. Just to realize that when God sees you know, I traveled with a friend of mine and everywhere we went he would say something like this. And even today he still says the same. Say, maunana hii. Hii nafajika leo. Ni hile ilikuwa imetabiriwa. Ulipo okoka, ilikuwa imekuwa package. It was in the package. You know, and it is good for us to know there is a package that was there. So what is happening now is that package. God is so good. He never revealed it to us but it is in that package. There are things that God is doing today. But if we knew they were going to be done today, maybe some of us will not be where we are or doing what, what we are doing. So God, my happiest way is to live that way. My part is to live for God and to pass my faith along to my children and then to my grandchildren. I must live so that those things for which I am praying and those things that I dream about may happen someday whether I'm alive or not but I speak to my children so that they can keep on waiting Psalms 105 is very very truthful it says this his faithfulness continues through all generation or if you like NKJV his, he, the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth, which is his faithfulness, continues to all generations. So it will come to pass. It will happen. It may not happen now, but it will come to happen one day. Remember, we don't know for how long we are going to be on this earth. You know, so when you look at Jonjo, what do you say? Jonjo amepita ile ya nguvu. You know, the Bible has two years. Meaka seventy hiyo. Ukiwa na nguvu, yani umekura vizuri, umeishi vizuri eight. Sasa one hundred utasama ni nini? Yama bado ni soba, si si nao. Bado ni soba. Bado politician wanenda kumuliza mawaitha at a hundred. Huh? I don't know whether you saw this. Walikuwa wameweka mtu kwa kiti, wanambia aweke mugu moja, ainuke na mugu moja. Mekalia kiti, uinuke na mugu moja. Nika jaripu, nika shindwa. Nika jaripu, nika shindwa. Alafu nika enderea kusoma, nika sema, wale watu wana shindwa hiyo, tukachorwa, vile tutakuwa. When we are 70, tukachorwa. <laughs> ah, nika sema, apana, kama ni hiyo sikubali, sita enda hivi. Eni umechorwa, umeenda hivi. Mwili imekuwa ni kama upinda, Amen. Mine is to trust God even at that time what happens that I will live a life that will please and glorify the Lord. We are going to make it. Tell your neighbor we are going to make it. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 55 this is a verse that most of us hear it every time we go to funeral services. We hear it, and it will be repeated here and there. It says this, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh hell, O oh Hades, where is your victory? But it is the sting part, because we, we, we fear it so much. So one man who went to the Second World War was giving this testimony. He said, they have gone to, they are in the forest, and as they come, he find a, a place where a bomb had exploded and had killed so many people. 
And then he is still getting back. And some of those were his friends. And he's getting back to, 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 to the camp. And when he got to the camp, he sees one of his fellow soldiers sleeping, putting his head on top of a bomb. And he got so scared. So he's going to help him so that he doesn't sleep on it because if it explodes, he's done. But when he goes close, he discovered ya kulipuka imetoreo. Haiwezi ripuka. Imekua disabled. Idi kudisebo ama ginafanya kwa nini kitha? Kera the? Eh? Idi doneti ni kubripua. Iyo, iyo ya kulipua. Si, hangi ya kuwa na kitu ya kuralia. Hako kakitu. Hako kakitu muna toaga. Kapini, hako kakitu. Kalikuwa kame torewa. Kwa hivyo ya melala pale. Na anajua, ninaweza lala na ningorote. Ninaweza lala na niote ndoto. Kwa sababu, Hakuna nguvu zinaweza nisu... Nataku kuzungumzia. Ni kuambie hivi. Yesu Kristo alishinda kifo na mauti. Na ameikanyanga na ameiralia. Maana yake ni kwamba hata nawe. Wezi ogopa kifo kwa sababu kimeshindwa. Na niseme hivi. Wale watu uwachwa na majonzi ni wewe na mimi. Anae dae. Hata ukimchuna. Ama umchape. Tuseme we ni mtu wa kakamega na amekataa kwenda kakamega na ako voi unaita wazee wale wanakuja kumchapa wa mchape alafu akubali kwenda kuzikwa. Huyo mwili hata ukichapa isikuwa ni hizo vitu zako unaamini. Huyo jamaa asikii uchungu. Lakini wale wanasema anasikiaga mpaka anakubali. Ati ukitaka aende muonyeshe Nairobi. Kama ameishi Nairobi miaka yote umweke ameangalia Nairobi na atafika kakamega bila kujua alikuwa anaangalia Nairobi. But I'm talking about death. That Oh, death. Oh, death. Where is your sting? Because the sting of... What is the sting of death? Let's continue. Verse 56. Oh, death. Where is your sting? Oh, hate is... The sting of death is what? A sin. And the strength of sin is what? Is law. And we are saying Jesus has overcome it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I may be dying, but I believe that one day... God will keep his promise. I want to be there when it happens. So Joseph says, don't leave my bones. Carry them with you. And you know, many years later, in Joshua 24, I think verse 23, many years, they have conquered and conquered and they conquered and conquered. And then what does it say? Can you put it? Let's see what it says. Uh, no, 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 no. Was it 20? Hey! Kwani ilikuwa gani? Ni 32. Sio, sio 23? Weka 32. Haha, ndiyo hiyo. Eh, na hii kuchanganyikuwa ukiwa badu ujafikisha 70. What does it say? Tusome pamoja. And the bones of Joseph which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt. They buried it where? Where? In the plot of ground which Jacob had done what? Had bought from the sons of? What Joseph was buried in his own land in the promised land he had the faith that take my bones to the promised land my prayer is I will be remembered for what Joseph was remembered for that promise many years the writer of Hebrews says and by faith Joseph and by faith Joseph he told them Put my bones and carry them to the province, promised land. And in Joshua 24, 32, the promise has come to fruition. How many years? Over 300 years after he died. May the Lord cause you not to worry. It will come to pass. It happened to, jo to Joseph when he had already died. But it will come to pass. But my prayer is, may some of these things happen when I still have bones to chew if it is a good. Yani wakati ninaweza enjoy 
You know somebody said kuna wakati hata ndege Samson hiyo tunaendaga nayo kuna wakati itafika hata kuingia daktari amekukataza hata mwili wako unakata kwenda kufika tu unaanza kutetemeka sijui nini so to enjoy wakati huu when when we can enjoy it to enjoy wakati huu some of you go to the water and swim when you can kuna wakati utaingia mguu iwezi inuka kwa hivyo have you ever gone to a swimming pool na unaona kuna wazee wengine yeye anaingia kwa upande wa na walk across Because that is the action uko nazo yeye hana akijaribu atakunywa maji. Wewe anasema, "Wewe, acha niende vile nimezoea." Ana anaingia tu kwa maji, ana walk tu. Oh God have mercy. I know you have a dream. I know there is something that you believe God for. I know. I also know that it doesn't it doesn't appear like it is going to happen. Why don't I pray for you? That God will give you the grace you name to to wait patiently for the seasons of restoration and manifestation and demonstration and the provision of that which you are dreaming for grace ya kugoja unajua ni neema ni neema bwana ya kusubiri ni neema what will you be remembered for kabla sija kuombea nikupe kisa kidogo tu kidogo tu hiki kisa kidogo tu kijana mmoja ambaye alikuwa akiuza yeye alikuwa broker broker unajua broker au broker wanauzaga real estate ka kijana tu kalikuwa kamefanikiwa kameanza kuwa na mahali akakuwa kameoa kakaanza kufikiria vile kataoa kakaona msichana mmoja si ni wachachi yetu deliverance au kijana kakawa kanamchukua asubuhi kanampeleka kazi jioni kanaenda kanachukua yeye kanaangusha kwake kalafu kanaenda karibu mwaka mzima usifanye hivyo ndugu usibebe dada mwaka mzima na gari yako usifanye hivyo wacha hii hizo story wacha lakini huyu alifanya alafu akaamua nataka kuoa huyu dada lakini sitaki kumwambia sitaki kupropose sitaki kupiga magoti Najua miaka hizi ni ya kupiga magoti yetu ilikuwa mnasimama kama askari kanga. Unamwangalia unamwambia vile unataka lakini saa hizi mguu mmoja chini una plead masses sijui masses sijui grace na favor. Akatafuta maagent wamchunguzie huyo msichana, wamwangalie vizuri, wajue kijiji chao, alisomea wapi, tabia zake, desturi zake, anapenda nini, anakuraga nini anaraga saa ngapi anaamkaka saa ngapi marafiki zake amchunguze kabisa ni angorotaga anaraga namna gani au wamchunguze kabisa 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 na wakafanya hivyo wakamchunguza na after two weeks wakamletea report report nzuri sana report ilisema hivi huyo msichana ni mzuri kabisa haja jichanganya yeye ako straight na anampenda Mungu sana na tabia yake ni nzuri hana ukora hana ukorofi akirara anaraga fofo akiamuka anaamka anaenda kazi lakini kuna kamtu ambako tabia yako sio nzuri kameanza kumchukua asubuhi kana mupeleka kazini kana mchukua kutoka kazini kana mrudisha nyumbani hako tu ndio kamtu ambapo tunaona hakana tabia nzuri sijui wewe ushuda utakubukwa namna gani lakini Turudi pale tulikuwa wako kwa sababu tuna ndoto tumeota sio na tunataka Mungu atupe neema ya kuwa na subira. Tuwe na, mwambie jirani yako subira. So that you can have patience may God give you the grace. And if that is your prayer stand up I'll pray for you quickly in the mighty name of Jesus. He na mkisimama nyote simuko nyote basi. Bas shika mtu mkono mmoja shika mmoja mkono make sure your hand is holding somebody else because we are all believing together we can live together we can serve the lord together our heavenly father the father of our lord and savior jesus christ we have a dream this church is composed of dreamers this church has people that have vision this church has people that you have promised things and they have believed them This church heavenly father knows that you will bring them to pass. I'm praying as we hold hands that you give us the grace, the grace to wait for the seasons 
of restoration and demonstration and the provision and the healing and what your father you have promised you're going to do may you release that grace right now in the name of jesus father we open up our hearts and receive that grace right now in the name of jesus father i pray for those that are waiting for one week may you bring it to pass and cause them to rejoice for one month for two months for a year for a couple of years father we are all going to wait patiently give us the grace to wait for that season for this we ask in jesus name let's give the lord praise in the house